and sometimes the cap helps. Uh, I got a really great show for you today. I got, uh, we're working with uh, Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox, and hopefully your creative toolbox, along with the Nick Collection. Uh, I'm working with Analog Effects Pro 2. This is a very simple image to make today. I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to link the image in the uh, description below the original uh, stock image so you can download it and work along with me. It's a great way of learning. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but without any further ado, hey, let's get started. Are you ready to have some fun? Well, here we are in Photoshop and I got this really cool image a nice fashion look image here. I really like the building behind our model here. It looks really cool. Uh, today, I'm going to use a couple different filters and getting really creative with plugins today. I'm going to be using uh, the Nick Collection. Uh, specifically, I'll be using the uh, Color, or not the Color Effects Pro 4, but the Analog Effects Pro 2. I love this filter. It's very creative. And if you guys have the old Google Collection that you got free, this will be in there. Uh, I have the new DxO version. It's got some new presets and things in it, which are really cool. And then after I send it into Analog Effects Pro 2 and have some fun there, then we're going to send it into Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox, and your creative toolbox as well, if you own it. And I love that program. So... We're going to go ahead and launch Analog Effects Pro 2 first. And I'm not going to go deep into this, but I'm just going to have some fun in here. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys already have this program here. So we'll just get right down to the nitty gritty here. Okay, so right now I'm in the Classic Camera Collection here. And it's uh, I, I guess it's on the first one here, Classic Camera by default. And you can click through these different ones. Let's go through this one, a couple of these and take a look. Like Classic Camera 2. This one looks really cool. I like the color there. Give it a second here to render out. <laughs> that looks kind of fun. I like that. And let's try one more. Here's more of a faded look on this one right here. See what this guy looks like. Takes it a second because there's a bunch of filters involved. I do like that. That looks cool. But I'm going to go uh, see where's this classic camera. Click right here where you see that little arrow. And here's all your different tool combinations in here. And so I'm going to click on On Vogue. This is some new presets that you get from the DxO uh, Nick collection here. And uh, there's some cool ones in here. Like here's another black and white. Let's see what that one looks like. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Uh, in this Autochrome 2, I'll just give you a couple samples here so you can see. I like that one. But the one I want to use today is called Double Exposure. And I like this effect right the way it comes out, you know, by default here. You'll see it here in a second. It's really cool. But you'll notice over here on the right, we have all these different adjustments. Now, right now, we're in the basic adjustment here. There's a really cool detail extractor in here, which pops detail out. So if I move this to the left, you'll just see it'll get rid of some of that detail. If I take it the whole way left, all that detail goes out of there, okay? But it was around, I think it was somewhere right around in there. Looks good to me anyway. But let's take the brightness. I want to lighten this image up a little bit. Now, I'm looking at my histogram down in the bottom right down here. And make sure I don't blow out my highlights. But I just want to lighten it up a little bit. Maybe right there. I think that looks good. And I think the double exposure looks really good. But let's go ahead and open this up here. Now, see where see where this plus is? You can click this and that will open up your file browser. You can add an entire different image uh, on top of an image for a really cool double exposure. So you can have fun with that, okay? Which is really nice. But I'm going to use the same image. Now, you see this little... Um, box right here this is one of the images now it's the same image twice and i can take this and i can move it around i can increase the size in other words let me just move it watch her glasses here as i move this to the left left upper corner a little bit here whoops if i can grab it move it see how the glasses move out so you can adjust that now i want to keep her lips pretty much right where they are because i don't want her face to look funny right there and this other button right here, if you click it, it's a zoom, like a zoom blur type deal. And you can either drag these handles, you can move this around to different positions, uh, or you can adjust the zoom strength here and it'll just widen it out. How much zoom strength is in there? See that? So we can get different effects here. So you can adjust it accordingly or you can, you know, give it more of a swirly look if you move this to the right like that, you know, so you can, you can play with this and have fun. But I think right around there looks really nice. I like that little double exposure coming out from her glasses there. It gives it a really nice avant-garde look. Is that a good term? I don't know. Uh, 
Anyway, there's a photo plate involved here. So if I shut off the photo plate, you can see what that's doing. Then if I open it up, you'll notice you have all these different plates in here. And you have different categories. Again, I don't want to go too deep here, but this is a lot of fun. Let me pull up the strength a little bit and you'll see. You can see some of the textures and things starting to pop through. But it was at around like 11 and I liked it where it was. So I'm going to put it back to where it was. And then the other setting is a film type. Let me shut it off and turn it back on. It just adds, think of color grading. And you have all these different uh, film type looks here. And if you click here where it says cool, you can go to different categories here, which is really nice. They have black and white neutral and tone. So cool stuff. Let me click on another one here, like this uh, more magenta tone here. See, it adds more of a magenta twist to it. But let's go back to the original. But I'm happy with this. This is really cool. Oh, and by the way, there's this I'm feeling lucky button right here. If you click it, it'll just make random adjustments in this, uh, you know, with these different filters involved over here. And uh, I'm just going to click OK, and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. And next up, uh, Topaz Studio 2. By the way, uh, if you're wondering what this is, this is the Nick Selection Selective tool here, and it gives you all the different uh, Nick Collection uh, filters right in here. They just updated it. DxO has updated it, so it's a little bit cooler. Yeah, actually, it, it's a really nice looking interface. And you can, if I click right here, I can collapse it and I can leave it out in my desktop, which I like that. Or I could still come up here to filter and launch it here from the Nix collection. So whatever you like, I kind of like it here and it looks cool. And uh, I, I need to uh, duplicate my background layer. I'm just going to use my Tony Kuiper action. This guy right here, I'm going to click it. It just merges all these layers together. It's the same as doing that shift option command control e it's just quicker and let's just go ahead and rename this uh studio 2 and i'm going to go ahead and launch topaz studio 2 and we'll get started here for the next phase of uh of uh, artistic creative fun so i'm going to use only one filter in here and let's go ahead and find the in the stylistic section the ai remix i know i don't use this a whole lot but I like this filter right here, okay? But you can click on these different filters here and get different looks, right? And you can play with blend modes. <laughs> that one's a lot of fun. And you could take the opacity and pull the opacity back on it. Now, hey, that, that looks really cool, right? So, you know, don't be intimidated by these uh, different filters and things. You just got to play around. But I like that, man. But I'm not going to go there because I have one already picked up. And that is the a Neon Rise. This one's really cool, but... What I want to do is just take its opacity and pull it back a good bit. But just like that, I just really like that look. I like that little bit of pastel color that's going on in here. I think that looks really cool. And then, of course, you have blend modes here. You know, you can hover through these blend modes and see how these blend modes interact with your image, which is fun, too. But on this one, I think I like it right in the normal blend mode. And, of course, we have style strength, low, medium, or high. I'm going to leave it on low. And, uh, of course, we have brightness, contrast, and things like this we can adjust, and we can suppress artifacts. But I like it just the way it is, and hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just click Accept and send us right back into Photoshop. And I'm going to launch the Nick Collection one more time. So let's go ahead and pop this open. I'm going to go right back into uh, Analog Effects uh, Pro 2. And... All I want to do in here is work with a digital frame, okay? So to do that, I have to wait till this finishes loading here. It takes a second or two. All right, are you ready for the fun? So let's come back up here with this classic camera. Click here. Now what I want to do is um, go to camera kit. See where it says build a camera, camera kit. Click on that. And now you can uh, now you can just manually add the filters you want. Now you notice on the right-hand side of the interface, these are all the different filters in here. To get rid of them, the ones that are highlighted, see like film type, lens, and yet uh, dirt and scratches. What you need to do is hover over here and see the little negative. Give that a click. That goes away. See, it's removed from the stack of filters. Lens, vignette. I want to get rid of that one. I want to get rid of the dirt and scratches. I'm going to keep. You can't get rid of the basic adjustments. It's always on there. But I want to add a filter called um, frames. So click the little plus here. And that adds that filter right there. And that looks kind of cool. But what I want is one from the Lightbox group right here. And it's the very first one right here. I'm going to click on that. Give it a second here. And that looks cool. I don't like the black border, but you see here where it says scale. 
I'm going to take this and drag it in till that black border goes away. And really, I think the uh, black on the edge just uh, it just takes away from the quality of the look I'm going for. I think maybe right around there looks really cool. Now let's come up to the basic adjustments. And uh, I think I want to take the detail extraction. Do I want to take that off? Yeah. Okay, that looks cool right there. I'm going to brighten it up a little bit. I think it's gotten a little dark. Yeah, I like it a little lighter. I'll tell you what I like about this. I like this little bit of uh, dust in here, and I like this little swirly thing. Let me shut this off the frame so you can see. See that? See that little bit? It adds a little bit more tension, and again, I like the dust down in here. And let's go to frames here. And okay, we got the scale adjusted. Yeah, that looks good. I'm happy with it. Is it light enough? I think it is. I think I'm happy with it. And let me check the basic adjustments one more time. Maybe maybe I'll pull the contrast back a little bit. Yeah. I just want to keep it a little little happier. Sometimes I think if you add too much contrast, it gets it can get a little depressing looking, but I want it to look fun. And again, I can look at my histogram, make sure I don't blow anything out as I move this brightness up. Don't want to go too much. I'm going to leave it right there. I'm not blowing out my highlights. I think it looks good. I'm happy with it. I'm going to click OK. And that sends us back into Photoshop. And there we go. Let's get rid of this. Click these dots right here. And that just, you know, closes up that panel. Gets it kind of out of the way a little bit there. So we've come from right here, which is a really cool image. And we went and added Analog Effects Pro 2 to it. And it looked like that. And that's really cool by itself. It could be done right there. Then I sent it into uh, Studio 2. And we added that AI remix to it. And I really like it. And then I went back into Analog Effects Pro 2. And added that little bit of a frame to it. and Which also put a little bit of a texture over it. And that little swirliness. So I think it looks really cool. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this one today. And this is getting creative with plugins inside of Photoshop. Well, there it is. Getting creative with plugins, you know, working with the Nick Collection. I love the Nick Collection. Hey, let me know what you think about the Nick Collection. I, th I think it's awesome. And uh, working with Topaz Studio 2, the Creative Toolbox. I love it. The Remix Filter is really cool. I'm going to start using it a lot more. And I'm going to use start using these two programs a lot together, like the Nick Collection with um, Topaz Studio 2, and along with Luminar. I mean, all this stuff together. I really love this uh, plug-in workflow inside of Photoshop. So, hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you will be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. It's always a pleasure being here with you. I really appreciate each and every one of you for your comments, your feedback, your likes, your shares, all that kind of stuff. It's really cool.